Hey folks, last week we talked about Proverbs chapter 6, the ant. Uh, he had no leader, yet he prepared his food in the summertime. We're going to jump over to Proverbs 30 today as we continue talking about how nature teaches us. We have the ant again. We have the rock badger who, though small, is wise enough to make his home among the rocks. We have locusts who, though they have no leader, they still go about in ranks. And finally, the lowly lizard, though you can catch them with the hand, they still have residence in the king's castle. So what is the point? The point is wisdom comes not by how big you are or how small you are, what your last name is or isn't, uh, what your educational pedigree is. I've seen some folks highly schooled but poorly educated. I've seen folks that have a ton of knowledge, but not an ounce of wisdom, knowing how to live in this world as God would have them to. Now, Proverbs 17, 2 says that a, a servant who deals wisely will rule over a son who lives or acts shamefully and will gain an inheritance among the brothers. Now, I've seen this. I've seen where there's been a faithful employee rise above the owner's own sons and he gets a part of the business simply because the the sons weren't smart enough or were not uh, engaged enough to run the business. So these things literally happen. But the point is, this guy started out as a servant. But because he was wise, conducted himself wisely, he kept on going up until he had a share along with the brothers. He wasn't part of the family, but yet his wisdom brought him to that point of gaining an inheritance. And here's the challenge, folks. And again, I hope you share this with your children as well. On our sofa in our kitchen, we have a saying that says, it doesn't matter how you start or where you start. It matters how you finish. And I talk to my sons and daughters about this all the time because so some people start out with privilege, but they don't do much with it. Some folks start out with hardship, yet do a lot with it. And we can't always uh, help how we start, but we can work by the grace of God to know how we finish. Wisdom is open to anybody who will want it. I'm going to read several portions of Scripture here from both uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Proverbs. Now listen to this. If you are in maybe an adverse situation, maybe you're 19, 20, and you don't have some financial advantages, that is not an excuse. You cannot be wise and have a victim mentality. It just won't work because there's no excuse with God. Uh, chapter 1 says, Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. And here's what she says. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Now, I think that's more descriptive than prescriptive, yet the principle is there. Wisdom is crying out. She wants to give of herself. And that goes along with the next chapter as well. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, you cry out, James chapter 1, if you lack wisdom, to ask of God. If you seek it like silver and search for it as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in their integrity. And so during this little time that we have with the wisdom, man, I encourage you young people to cry out for wisdom to God, to ask for a heart that wants to seek wisdom. Wisdom throughout the scriptures is more precious than silver, better than gold. It will take you so far in life. It teaches you how to handle your mouth, how to conduct yourself in various settings. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. And so I encourage you throughout this month, look at the prayer and fast requests. Even if you don't fast with us, still pray for these requests because it's all a result of God's grace in your life. I hate to sound preachy, but this is for you. You can grow in wisdom no matter where you start. This is Kirk Smith with ICHEs. Take five.